is a presentation of Fox Sports. The playoff party's getting started, and we'll tell you who's invited, and who'll need to make other plans for the new year. The Falcons will be playoff bound just in the vick of time with a victory against Cleveland. But will the never say die Browns pull out another win to keep their playoff hopes alive? The Saints have been playing like sinners, but they still have a shot at the playoffs when the Panthers come to town. New Orleans needs to win and get some help to have their playoff prayers answered. If the Packers beat the Jets, the road to the Super Bowl will run through the frozen tundra. The AFC East is up for grabs between the Jets, Dolphins, and Patriots. Miami can clinch the division and send New England home for the holidays. No one's talking playoffs when the boys play the Skins, but JB sits down with Steve Spurrier to talk about his Redskins and the ball coach's rookie season. Speaking of rookies, David Carr can't wait for the offseason, but it's the postseason that awaits the Titans, who can clinch a first-round bye with a win. We'll break down the entire playoff race, plus Jillian's weather, Jimmy's picks, and what everyone's been waiting for, the 2002 Terry Awards right here on Fox. right here on Fox. 10 of the 13 games today have playoff implications. Soon, we'll see if Green Bay or Philadelphia gets home field advantage in the NFC. And we'll find out who makes the postseason and who goes home. It all comes down to the last weekend of the regular season, and isn't that just perfect? And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown, and welcome to Fox NFL Sunday. I know how he is watching me already. Did he say perfect or perfect? Joining me once again, three guys who know all about Super Bowls, seven Super Bowls between you, Four, one, two, and two Super Bowl MVPs. Hey, you're still fired up about yesterday's game, huh? Yesterday, if we can get anything like we had yesterday, that's the best football game I have seen in decades. And I've been around a long time, JB. No. You sure have. Yeah. <laughs> With that in mind, we'll segue from that and say, well, the simple way to describe the Budweiser AFC playoff picture is that seven teams are vying for two playoff spots. But it's a lot more complicated than that. Yesterday, the Oakland Raiders made a lot of people's job a little easier by nailing down home field advantage throughout the playoffs. This Doug Jolly touchdown made the Raiders jolly and helped them to eliminate the Chiefs 24-0. So, let's check out the Budweiser AFC playoff picture. As I mentioned, Oakland has the top seed, while Tennessee and Pittsburgh have clinched their divisions. Kansas City's loss means the Indianapolis Colts have wrapped up a wild card berth. Miami can win the AFC East by beating the Patriots today. And if the Dolphins win and Cleveland wins, the Browns are in the playoffs. The Jets, Broncos, Chargers, Patriots, and Ravens all need to win and get some help. Over in the NFC, the Giants shocked the Eagles yesterday, and it all began with this touchdown by Jeremy Shockey. A little trash talking there. That sent the game into overtime, where safety Sean Williams, as Terry predicted, intercepted A.J. Feely, setting up the game-winning field goal as kicker Matt Bryant, who was a pawnbroker earlier this season, drills that 39-yarder, and the Giants win it by the score of 10-7. New York miraculously makes the playoffs, and they deliver a serious blow to the Eagles' chances for home field advantage. That's because when you take a look at the Budweiser NFC playoff picture, a Green Bay win against the Jets at the Meadowlands today on Fox means the road to the Super Bowl goes through Lambeau Field. The wild card race is simple. The Giants are in, and Atlanta gets in with a win. As for Nolens, the Saints must win, and Atlanta has to lose. Otherwise, the Saints are playing golf on Monday. So it's still a dogfight for the last NFC wildcard spot, and it's appropriate that Atlanta plays today in the dog pound. The Falcons battle the Browns in calling today's game, Kenny Albert. And hello, Kenny. JB, they are ready in the dog pound as the Cleveland Browns look to clinch a playoff spot with a win and some help. Tim Couch and the Browns only two victories at home this season, however, over Houston and Cincinnati. 
On the other side, the Atlanta Falcons can clinch a playoff berth for the first time since 1998 with a victory or a New Orleans loss. Falcons have had a big play offense led by Michael Vick. They've also had a big play defense. Here's my partner, Tim Green. You're right, Kenny. This defense is ranked third in interceptions, fourth in quarterback sacks. A big part of it, all-pro linebacker Keith Brooking. Keith, what do you guys have in store for Tim Couch today? Well, we know the situation with Tim. Uh, the guy's getting booed when he throws an incomplete pass here, so we got to get in his face early and often, hit him in the mouth for 60 minutes, and, uh, you know, when, when, when he throws a couple of incomplete passes, you see his confidence shaking, and, um, you know, that's, that's when we get after him. We really put the nail in the coffin. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Good luck to you guys today. Now down to Sam Rosen in New Orleans. Thanks very much, Tim. Two weeks ago, Saints fans were thinking playoffs. Now they're just hoping for the best. And the best would be a Saints win over Carolina and Atlanta losing, and the Saints would be in the playoffs. But to do that, they have to bounce back from two terrible losses, one at home to Minnesota two weeks ago and last week in Cincinnati. They need their best players to come up with big plays. And they have to overcome some injuries. Linebacker Darren Smith is out. Rookie James Allen makes his first NFL start. Jerome Pathon is out in Dante Stallworth starts at wide receiver. The Saints hope to be hitting all the right notes today. Now to Detroit, to Drew Goodman. Thanks very much, Sam Rosen. We're at beautiful Ford Field in Detroit. The Vikings getting ready to take on the Lions despite plenty of speculation in the last few weeks. The futures of Matt Millen and Marty Morningweg will not be determined until after the game, according to the Ford family. Now, the Vikings have been playing their best football. They're trying to win their third consecutive game and do something they've never done before. Behind that man, Michael Bennett, win a team rushing title. That's a story here in Motown. Now let's get it to Washington and Pat Summerall. At FedEx Stadium, a definite goodbye today to one of the great individuals and one of the great players ever to play this game, Daryl Green of the Redskins. After 20 years, Daryl Green is through. Not so certain about their goodbyes are the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Dave Campo. There's all kind of speculation, of course, about this being his last game at the helm of the Cowboys. And we're not sure about the future of Emmett Smith. Will this be his last game? Uh, with the star on the side of his helmet or will he go elsewhere or will he come back here for less of a contract who knows but one thing is sure we'll say goodbye to a great one today Daryl Green of the Redskins now back to you JB all right Pat and he is a good one indeed <laughs> later today Green Bay goes for home field advantage against the Jets who can still win the AFC East also Denver tries to keep their slim playoff hopes alive against the Cardinals, while San Diego tries to do the same against Seattle. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on Fox. Two of the biggest games on our air today, Cleveland and Atlanta, and certainly that'll be early. Late will be Green Bay at the Jets. Jimmy, talk Atlanta and Cleveland. Well, if Cleveland's going to beat Atlanta, they're going to have to prevent the big play, and Atlanta's one of the best in the league. They're tied for the most runs over 20 yards. Michael Vick with 10 and Warwick Dunn with 6. On the other side of the ball, you know, Cleveland, they're one of the worst in the league as far as long runs. They've only had five over 20 all year long, so they're going to have to rely on Tim Couch. Now, Tim Couch has been sporadic all year long, but he's played his best football the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the interesting thing about the Green Bay Packers, they're, they're in position to wrap up home field advantage, and the thing that Mike Sherman is probably most famous for to our viewing audience is seeking out Warren Sapp in the Tampa Bay game, but he's done a remarkable job. This team has been decimated by injuries throughout the year, and they've showed great depth, and he's done a great job of keeping that group together, and today's no different. They lose both their right tackle and their left tackle. Tauscher and Clifton are out. Flanagan, young center, moves out to left tackle, and free agent rookie Kevin Barry moves out to right tackle and for the Jets one of the reasons why they've had so much success on offense Morton leads the AFC in kickoff returns and Santana Moss leads the NFL in punt returns we laugh about special teams but no I don't think yeah. a head coach no. laughs at him Howie you know and there's there's speculation in Green Bay and a lot of it started by Brett Favre that you know the, the, the retirement talk but here's something Brett Favre was raised properly by his mom and dad he's not gonna say hey how about give me a, a a little more bonus money and I'll hang around a couple of three more years and so I think that's something might happen Brett's building a new home in Hattiesburg Mississippi 24,000 square feet Man. at two hundred dollars per not bad so a little more money for Brett also look for Green Bay if they can do this to go out and draft a quarterback in the first round to kind of 
heir apparent. They Maybe. have to call Granddaddy Barnes to find out if he's anywhere near that house down <laughs> in Hattiesburg. All right, folks, I'm Texas, that's right. Barnes. Jimmy's picks and Jillian's weather. And then we'll hear from Redskins head coach Steve Spurrier. He had a lot of success in college, but it's been a learning experience in the NFL. And after that, it's the 10th annual Terry Awards. We couldn't wait to give out Terry's Rookie of the Year. So the winner is, hey, no shock here, the Giants' Jeremy Shock. It means a lot to me that you know, a guy like him picked me because you know, he's one of those tough, rugged guys that you, know, you couldn't ever get anything you know, past him and you know, love to play the game. So you know, someone like him you know, giving me a award like this, I'm, you know, I'm very excited and honored to you know, receive it from a guy like him. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Sprint. Introducing PCS Vision. Clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. By Dr. Stain Defender. Don't be the one without it. By T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. And by Porsche. Discover what only Porsche brings to driving. As we welcome you back to Fox NFL Sunday, we go over to the more popular JB and hey, Nice outfit. Where? Now, I gave you a $5 Radio Shack gift certificate, Thank which you. will go a long way towards some walkie-talkies, but the rest of the outfit, where'd you get that? Well, you know, after uh, you guys got kicked out of the restaurant yesterday for being loud and obnoxious, uh, I went shopping with TV's beautiful daughters, and I bought them an outfit, and then in turn, TV bought me this. Oh, oh yeah. Full on. Pan down. I'll it's worth you. the pan. And the rumors will it's start. It's worth now. the pan. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Nice. Right. Well, he didn't throw in the boots. He said the cashmere sweater was enough. You buy the boots. You got that right, babe. Right. <laughs> okay, this is what's going on weather-wise. First of all, uh, from the Northeast to the Midwest, it's going to be a nice quiet day because this cold front that stretches down from New York to Maine is actually kind of a dry one. So a nice, cool, perfect weather day. Football day. Perfect. It's going to be cool. Th uh, 31 degrees, rather. Oh, the boots are just the sparkling of the boots. It's just blinding. <laughs> 31 degrees uh, with the wind chill. It's going to feel like 28 for Green Bay at the New York Jets. Partly cloudy, breezy, and cool today. Good football weather for the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. Yeah, it's going to be a gorgeous day. 31. Again, it's a popular number. But on the West Coast, where all the action is, there's a storm front that dumped about an inch of rain yesterday in Oakland. It is now moving into the Rockies. And uh, field conditions should be in decent condition after that front moves through. South of that, San Diego, uh, here and there, they're on the tail end of the front. So it's 72 degrees, or 60 degrees, 72 percent humidity with the wind chill. It's going to feel like 41 in Arizona and Denver. I'm still shopping. Did, did you know that Brett Favre was 35 and 0 in temperatures under 30? Yeah. Four degrees. Four degrees. Yeah. 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 I'm coattailing off what Jillian said about the uh, weather action on the West Coast. Uh, weather action on the West wow. Coast here. Anyway, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're a friendly there, guy, yeah. all right, folks. We'll give her, I can't believe what I'm about to say. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel and Terry Bradshaw actually agree on something. Both picked the Giants to win the last two weeks, and they both were right. In fact, Jimmy's on fire lately. He's won seven out of his last eight picks. Thanks, JB. 5-1 last weekend, 2-0 and yesterday. It is good to be me. But today is a new day. You can't dwell on the past, although it seems like that's what everyone is doing these days. Take Deion Sanders, for example. Now, I happen to like Deion. He and I get our suits at the same place. But who does he think he's kidding with this comeback nonsense? When he retired, Deion Sanders was a below-average player on a crappy team. Matter of fact, if you switch channels right now, you'll see he still is. But we're supposed to believe he could just put on a Raiders uniform and lead them headfirst into the Super Bowl? No. Obviously, that wasn't ever going to happen. But we believe a lot of garbage. Bill Parcells and Jerry Jones met for eight hours and didn't discuss the Cowboys' head coaching job. Seriously, I'd like to send a UN inspection team into Dallas and see what they uncover there. Everybody in TV sports is always going somewhere. Dion might leave CBS, Parcells might leave ESPN, Chris Carter did leave HBO. These guys kill to get a broadcasting job, then bolt the second they get the chance. And let me tell you, it's an insult to serious broadcast professionals like myself. You think I don't get offers to coach the Bengals or to fill in a quarterback from Philadelphia? I do. I get plenty of them. But I have the decency and respect for my employers and colleagues to say, thanks, guys, but no thanks. I made a commitment here. I got a job to do. Right, Sal? Thank you. All right, time to do my job. I'll go Colts over the Jaguars, Packers to jump on the Jets, Titans to trounce the Texans, and my upset pick, Panthers surprise the Saints. Let me recap. Colts, Packers, Titans, and Panthers. And by the way, if you Raider fans are looking for somebody to jump out of the broadcast booth and help your team, you're barking up the wrong tree. Forget Deion Sanders. We got your guy right here at Fox. Take a look. 
That's right, look out, Oakland. Howie Long is coming back. I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and those are my picks. Not a bad looking woman. Ah! Looking woman. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you one thing. Speaking of Howie Long, Howie and I, after yesterday's show, as you saw Cousin Sal and things are going on with Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel is now a two timer. He got married last night in Vegas. I took my camera, and Howie and I went off to Vegas and snuck into the room. Watch this. That is sad. Hey, uh, that, that monkey could have done better. He stole your date, right? You know what? I know my guys too well, so we better move on real quickly yeah. here. Despite the fact that Howie Long has already won, oh. the Porsche Challenge is back. We're playing out the string, so guess what? I go first today, and I'm going with the Indianapolis Colts to score the most points because I think they got an awful lot on the line, and they will play up to it. Coming up next is Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, Denver's going to score the most points because they're playing Arizona. Hey, now, wait a minute. Bradshaw, what are you doing? When I grow up, I don't want to be a quitter, so therefore I've quit. I picked the Cardinals, I picked the Bengals, and I picked the Cowboys. They're all sorry. I don't think I got a chance. I'll take the Bills. All, all right. right. <laughs> solid, solid effort. Well, for winning the Porsche Challenge, Howie will be getting a new Porsche Cayenne, Taxes. which he'll donate to a charity of his choice, Casa Court Advocate. Court appointed special advocate. Thank you very much there, big boy. Meanwhile, getting set in Cleveland, the two signal callers, Tim Couch and Mike Vick, the Falcons get in the playoffs with the win, while Cleveland gets in with the win and a Patriots loss. Back with more after this.